Today we are gonna to chat some more about Medicube. Now, last week I did their EMS device and today we are going to talk about their AirShot device. Like I said last week, I purchased all of these devices myself. These are not sponsored videos and I am not an affiliate with Medicube. Really what I wanna do is just give you the most unbiased, kind of lay out the facts and also lay out any science that I have come across any knowledge that I have of the modality and just kind of give you my opinion. I also am going to, of course, demo the device as well as let you know my results after using the device for a little bit, you know, a little bit of time. So we're gonna talk about all of that today. If you are new here, my name is Penny. I am a master esthetician. I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel before you go. Here we do all kinds of product reviews. I do protocols. I love to do device reviews and kind of go over the science and the specs of of different devices, what's new in skincare. I absolutely have a passion for skincare, and I hope that if that is of interest to you, that you will consider joining the fam. Click that subscribe button down below and tap the bell so that you're notified anytime I drop a new video. Let's get into this one. Okay, let's quickly go through what the AirShot is and what they claim. First of all, this is a handheld device that is needle-free mesotherapy. That means that while you see no needles here, this plate puts out an electrical high voltage current that creates transient pores in the skin like a physical needle would. That's what, that's what the claim is, like a physical needle would so that you may put on a topical and it may penetrate the skin better. So it's kind of likened to derma rolling, cosmetic rolling, the very, very, very shallow needles of a derma roller or the very shallow needles on a microneedling pen for cosmetic needling just into that superficial epidermis. That's the kind of superficial needle-free mesotherapy that this device claims to do. And it does it with electricity. Now that is called electroporation. Now electro Operation is actually used a lot in medical in the medical world and it is used to do something called it, it's it's a transdermal drug delivery system so basically it's saying it can get across the skin without needles and deliver a drug into the cells and again that's used in the medical world and it is definitely a thing so of course device makers for skincare can see the you know the potential benefit for people when we really know that this stratum corneum, this outer layer of skin is such a good barrier. We've talked about that a bunch. It's meant to th keep bad things out, keep good things in. And that means that a lot of the stuff that we put on our skin has a hard time getting in our skin. So it's one of those um, ever present challenges to you know break that barrier without breaking that barrier so that the stuff that we want to get in can get in. And that is the kind of thing that this is saying it can do. Okay, so this device has five levels of strength and it is kind of a nifty little, very, very lightweight device and it's very, very easy to use. They have three different methods for you um, applying the device to your clean, dry skin. So no products on your skin when you use this device. And and you can either tap the skin, you can sweep or brush. And I found that tapping the skin was definitely the easiest way to use it. You very, very quickly tap on and off the skin all over your face and it goes for five minutes and it gives you a countdown. It will tell you after each minute until minute five and then the device shuts off. After the five minutes, you're supposed to put on a serum of choice. They recommend, of course, their serum. This is their Zero Pore One Day Serum and I did buy this as well. It's an excellent serum. I, I definitely like, so far, my experience with the Medicube skincare products has been very, very positive. This one is alpha hydroxy acid. It is a lactic acid, which is a humectant slash exfoliating acid. So it's going to not only hydrate the tissue, but it's also gonna help to gently exfoliate the tissue. Then this has beta hydroxy acid, which is salicylic acid. Salicylic acid is going to help to disencrust the pore lining. And that's exactly what it sounds 
sounds like. We've talked about disencrustation on this channel before, but it's gonna literally get, if you imagine this is your pour, it's gonna get all, eat away all of the attachments of any debris so that that debris isn't stuck inside a pour attached to the skin. And anytime you can disencrust a pour lining, then any debris can just kind of come out as you do normal skincare activities like washing your, your face, stuff like that. The salicylic acid itself doesn't pull debris out of your skin, it just helps to loosen it up and dislodge it so that it just freely moves out of the skin and doesn't get stuck in the skin. It's a fantastic ingredient. Salicylic acid can also help with brightening your skin and the texture of your skin as well. Now, the other thing that's in here is polyhydroxy acid. Polyhydroxy acid is also great for refining the pores. It's great for brightening the skin and it's good for exfoliation and texture. So this serum is really, really beautiful. It's very lightweight, soaks into the skin. It remains tacky for just a few minutes and then it goes away and it plays really beautifully under all of your other skincare, at least mine. And I, I find it to be really nice you do definitely need to make sure that you are on point with your sun protection anytime you're using multi acids because they can make you a little bit more sensitive to the sun and a little bit more susceptible to sun damage if you're not protected. So you need to be aware of that with this. So the entire idea is you use this for five minutes and then you put on this serum. Theoretically, the serum penetrates a little bit better and you're supposed to get even better clearance of your pores, more refinement of the pores without the hassle of derma rolling, without the irritation of derma rolling, without the blood of derma rolling. This is what the company says. That's what Medicube says. Okay, so let's break that down. First of all, with derma rolling, we've talked about that a bunch on this channel. The counterpart to this is going to be cosmetic needling, like I said. It's gonna be really, really shallow needling, 0.2, let's say, millimeters, tiny, tiny, tiny short needles, okay. That kind of cosmetic rolling really doesn't cause a lot of irritation. It's no blood and it's a very, very low risk of infection and it's really easy and fast to do and definitely does induce better product penetration because there are physical holes being made into your skin with those needles. There's quick holes that close up pretty fast, but they definitely are open just long enough for you to apply products so that those products may penetrate just a little bit further into the outer layers of your skin, okay? So the comparison to derma rolling to me is it, it, it doesn't really hold a lot of water because all of the things that they say are negatives to derma rolling aren't exactly negatives. Now, if this was comparable to medical needling, that would be a different story because medical needling, yes, can definitely cause irritation. It can cause dryness. It can cause bleeding. It can cause certainly redness. There's a little bit of downtime, all of that kind of stuff. But this definitely doesn't purport to be an alternative to medical needling because it's just not. There's no way that this over-the-counter electroporation causes transient pores into the skin that are as deep as medical needling. So those are not the things that this is comparing. This is comparing like on their site, et cetera, to cosmetic needling. But it's not a very good comparison because everything they say that's negative about the cosmetic needling isn't really a thing. So I, I take issue with that to begin with. Okay, but let's get back to this device specifically. Now, when we talk about electroporation, what's really important for you to understand is that there's a lot of science that says that electroporation may actually cause cellular damage. It's a possibility. Now, there are other scientific studies and papers, etc. I will link several things in the description box that say that the cellular damage is minimal and that the cells can come back to homeostasis after they repair themselves. So there is definitely a question if the electroporation actually does work, whether or not it causes some cellular damage. So you have to ask yourself, is it worth potentially causing some damage to your cells in order to maybe get some better product penetration? Okay, so that's my first issue with this device. Second issue is that the transient pores or holes that the device makes with that high voltage electricity are just that. They're ultra transient, meaning they open and close very, very fast. The way that you use this device is for five minutes, it gives you this whole countdown, and as soon as you're done, you apply the product. 
the likelihood uh, that the the holes that were created in the first four minutes and 58 seconds are still even open is pretty unlikely. Maybe the very last place that you touched might might have a, a little bit of an opening. Everywhere else, the entire point of electroporation is transient pores. So quick open milliseconds, open and close for drug delivery. There, I mean, when they do this in medicine, it is a careful, quick dance of application of a drug and application of the electricity, and that has to happen in a certain way. It is definitely not five minutes later applying a drug or you know to get across, transdermally get across. So I take issue with whether or not this actually even does work. Editing pen here, I have to pop in really quickly because as I was doing a little bit more research on electroporation after I already filmed the bulk of this video, I did come across an article uh, that is in support of electroporation and does indeed indicate that the transient pores that are created with electroporation may actually stay open longer than just while the electric field is being applied to the skin. The literature suggests that there are two types of openings that happen. One is a larger opening and that opening is right as the device is being applied. The, as the electrical field is being applied to your skin or near your skin, that transient opening is open and closed in like a millisecond. That's a large pore opening that would allow larger molecules to get into the skin. Then this is saying that they're finding in literature, and I will link all of this, that it appears that there are smaller pores that remain open for a long time after the electrical field is applied. So if that is the case, then theoretically applying a product after you're done doing this could actually work. The thing that I want to point out, and you will see when you see this on the screen, is that what they're saying is those large openings that are happening while you're applying the um, device, which whatever electroporation device you are using, those are able to take in macro molecules, so bigger molecules. These smaller pore openings, it sounds like they're able to take in molecules up to a thousand Daltons. Now, don't get in the weeds over Daltons. Daltons are to molecules like pounds are to us. They're just a measure of weight and size. And so a Dalton, the more Daltons there are in a molecule, the bigger, bigger the molecule is. Now we already have something called the 500 Dalton rule. And basically what that is, is it's saying that any molecule that's over 500 Daltons, it's gonna have a hard time getting in just normally when we put it on our skin with no help of anything past our barrier. It's just not gonna get past, it's too big. This is saying that it sounds like these small pores that remain open after the treatment is done for a while, even hours it's saying, it could be open for hours, they may be able to accept molecules up to a thousand Daltons. So in order to get a little bit of reference here, I thought that we could look at what the Dalton size is of various things. Now, lactic acid and salicylic acid and polyhydroxy acids, they are all already smaller than 500 Daltons. So this serum is going to penetrate already because it, it already passes the 500 Dalton rule. It is smaller than 500 Daltons, so we already know that it can penetrate and do what it needs to do. It doesn't really need the help of a device. Okay, so there is that. However, I suppose there could be an argument that if there are small pores, perhaps that could work even better. I'm sure that that's an argument that could be made. But what I wanted to point out is that lots of things are going to be larger than 1000 Daltons. So while this may create small pores that do stay open, if you, if you believe this particular literature, which I will link, if, if it is true that smaller pores stay open for hours, they still can only allow in things up to 1000 Daltons in weight what would that be? That could be peptides. And I will say 
that I am sort of newly intrigued by this after coming across this literature because peptides are, if you're not aware, they are comprised of amino acids. They are strung up amino acids. Typically an amino acid is about 110 Daltons in weight. And a lot of times you get multi amino acids together and they form a peptide. Now, obviously, once you get five peptides together at 110 Daltons per amino acid, you're already over your 500 Dalton rule and you start to encounter that issue with penetration. It's already too big. But if you have a device like this that does actually keep some of those small pores open, then that does leave room for some of those peptides that are like pentapeptides, so that's five amino acids put together, and then your peptides that have six or seven or eight uh, amino acids strung together. For that, this could be very interesting. So I wanted to lay that out. When I came across this, I thought I have to share that information. It's gonna be just stuck in this video. It's probably gonna look all disjointed and weird, but I definitely wanted to draw your attention to that. So that does make this a little bit more interesting to me, I will admit. And I'm kind of, I'm still thrown off by the burning flesh and hair. I am, I am I'm thrown off by that. But this definitely throws a little bit of a wrench at my monkey and um, I'm gonna I'm going to explore more wanted to give you all of the information so that we have it all laid out okay back to the video the other thing about this is that when you are using this device at least in my experience I can smell burning hair and flesh now it could just be burning peach fuzz it really could be but it has that kind of distinct smell of singed skin slash singed hair so for me that's one of those things that is a huge red flag I don't really want to be burning the hair on my face if I get around the perimeter I don't want to burn my actual hair that's supposed to be you know on this part of my head I certainly don't want to singe my eyebrows so you have to take you know be very very careful with where you apply this device but beyond that to me my common sense says if I am singeing the upper layer of my skin and singeing hair what damage is that doing and what damage is that doing for the potential of maybe getting some products in a little bit further. And the thing is, is salicylic acid, lactic acid, and polyhydroxy acid, they have certain molecular sizes that are perfectly made for the penetration that they need to do. Now, once again, I want to reiterate, I am not an expert in electroporation. I just thought it would be interesting to lay out everything that I've learned over time, as well as, you know, some of the basic science behind electroporation. Now, many years ago, I purchased a device called the Leaf. I was really, really interested in electroporation. That device, actually, you put the product on and you use the product at the same time as the device. And at least for me, that makes a little bit more sense because the product is there in the moment that you create those transient holes. Now, I'm not saying that even that is great because the other thing with electroporation is there is a potential that the electroporation itself will damage the product to the point where it's actually not as good as if it didn't have an electrical field applied to it at all, meaning the product may be actually more effective on its own without electricity applied to it. So you have to take that into consideration as well. All of these things are just things to think about. And again, if you know more about electroporation, if you have a positive experience with this device or a positive experience with other electroporation devices, definitely comment down below, share your experience. This is a great opportunity for people who are searching for this device, who want information about this device to get multiple opinions and multiple points of view, lots and lots of science. This is definitely not me trying to tell you yes or no. However, if you had to, if you forced me to tell you to say, yes, you should get this device or no, you should not get this device, I would have to say that no, you should not get this device. That would be the point of view that I would take. Now, I did use this device for over two weeks, a couple times a week, just to kind of test it out. Even though smelling skin and smelling hair burning was disconcerting and I really wasn't sure that it was great for my skin. And I have to tell you, I didn't notice any change in my skin whatsoever, which two weeks isn't very much time, but I didn't notice a change in my pores 
pores. I didn't notice a change in the moment except for that I got a little bit pink. And so maybe that's a little bit of circulation. It could also be burning flesh. I don't know. However, that said, I'm definitely interested in your opinion and interested in your thoughts on this device. And certainly if you use this device, I'm interested in your experience as well. I do hope that this video was helpful. Check the description box. I'm going to link as many articles, studies. If you want to read up and read up and read up, I'm just going to put as much in there as I found so that you can see what I saw and get the full picture and make an educated decision about this device. I hope that you're having a really wonderful day and I will talk to you in my next skincare video. Take care.